in Creo Parametric, you can use the Behavioral Modeling Extension to create data analysis features for relations. And I'm going to show you a scenario in which I would want to do that. Here I have a part that I'm using in order to create a spline coupling. And I want to make it so that whenever I change the diameter of the shaft, well, the size of the splines will update automatically. Normally, I would do that with part level relations, but also with these different features, I want to save them out to a user defined feature so that they can be used in other different parts. Well, I can't have part level relations in a user defined feature, but I can use a datum analysis feature that contains relations. Okay, let's take a look at how to do this. I'm going to create a new part for my spline coupling. Let's call it spline coupling and then hit the OK button. I'm using my default template. Let's turn on the datum plane display. I will start by sketching on the plane called front and then let's use the sketch tool from the mini toolbar and then also from the right mouse button I can get to the circle command. Let's create a circle right at the middle. And I'm going to start with a diameter of 24. And then I can use the right mouse button to get out of sketch mode. With the sketch still selected, I'm going to extrude this. Let's use a depth of 250. And then hit the check mark. And so there I have the main shaft. Let's turn off the plane display and turn on the axis display. The first feature in my UDF is going to be a hole going down the middle. Let's click on the hole command and I will pick the axis it's going to be located on and then use the shift or excuse me the control key to select the starting surface. And here's a value of eight. I'm going to have it one third the diameter of the shaft and let's have it be a length that's the same length as the diameter of the shaft and later on I will control that with relations let's use the check mark to complete this the second feature that will be in here is a chamfer on the end of the shaft let's go to the chamfer command and normally probably 99% of the time I create edge chamfers but Thinking ahead, I know that I want to use these features in a user-defined feature later on. I can actually reduce the number of references necessary to locate this in a model by creating a surface-to-surface -surface chamfer. I will hold down the control key, select both of those, and here's got a value of four. I am happy with that. I want the chamfer diameter, or excuse me, the chamfer distance to be one sixth of the shaft diameter. All right, let's hit the check mark. So that is good. The next step is to create a sketch for the shape of the spline cut. So let's click on the sketch tool and I will sketch on this surface and let's hit sketch to get into sketch mode. Then I will look right on at the model and now let's add in a couple of sketch references. I know I want to grab the edge of the chamfer and then the edge of the shaft, or rather the surface of the shaft. That is good. Now I will create some concentric arcs. Let's go to the arc drop down, and here we have concentric. Pick what I want to be concentric to. Actually, before we do that, let's create some center lines. I'll create a vertical center line. And then let's make one about over here and about over here. And then I will create my concentric arcs. Concentric to this. Going from here to there. Are we snapping in? There we go. And then from here to there. Let's put some lines in order to close this off from there to there and then from here to there. And there we get the shaded loop. Let's put in a symmetric constraint between those two endpoints. 
and now I should be able to create a single dimension for the angle. And initially I want there to be eight splines, so each spline would be over 45 degrees, but it would be half of that value because you'd have the spline and then the portion that's not the spline. So let's change this to 22.5. Later on, I can change my UDF so that we have a variety of different numbers of splines that can be in here. Let's hit the check mark. And now let's take that sketch and extrude it. And I'm going to flip the direction. I'll use the right mouse button to change this into a cut. And let's initially make this the same length as the shaft diameter. All right, let's hit the check mark. And now with that extrude still selected, I can create a pattern. I can use the right mouse button to change to an axis pattern. Pick the axis I want to pattern about. Let's change to angular extent. And again, I initially want eight of these. And so now I can hit the check mark. And so now we have all the different features that are necessary for my user defined feature. But again, I want this to automatically change the dimensions of the hole and the chamfer and the spline cuts based on the diameter of whatever shaft that I place this in. So first we need to measure the diameter of the shaft. Let's go to the analysis tab and then from the measure drop down I can choose diameter and then I'll pick the shaft diameter. Now if I go to the feature tab by default it's automatically going to create two parameters in here but I only need the diameter. I don't need the radius. Let's go to the drop down. And by default, it's going to create a feature named measure diameter. Well, I'm going to change this. I'm going to call this shaft diameter, shaft DIA, and hit the enter key in order to create the datum analysis feature. And let's drag this up to appear below the, or excuse me, above the first feature that will be in my UDF, which I'll create in the next video. And here is the whole feature. Now again, I want the different dimensions to update based on the calculated diameter. To do that, I'm going to create a datum analysis feature. And you can do that from this command at the left side of the analysis tab. When I click on this, we get a dialog box. And there are eight different kinds of datum analysis features that you can create from this particular feature. There's something called a user-defined analysis. I showed that in another video. You can also do an Excel analysis. You can see that there's external, ergonomics, career simulate, one for the old MathCAD and another for MathCAD Prime. But I'm going to choose the type relation. And let's change the name of the feature. Let's call this spline sizing and hit the enter key. Now I will click the next button and this will give me the relations dialog box. So again, I'm creating a feature that's going to contain a number of these different relations. And I always like to start off with some comment lines. So the first one will be control size of center hole. And now I will pick the center hole. And here we have two different dimensions. So here's the D4 dimension. This is for the diameter of the hole. I want D4, I want this to be equal to that measured shaft diameter divided by three. One way that you can get to the different parameters is by using the insert parameter name from list icon. And here it's showing my part level parameters, but I want the parameter from that feature that measures the diameter. Let's go to the drop down for look in and change from part to feature. And then I can pick that feature. And here is the diameter and then insert selected. And so here it pasted in here diameter, the name of the parameter colon FID underscore 568. So that 568, that is the feature identification number of the shaft underscore DIA 
datum analysis feature that calculates the diameter. So that feature identification number, sort of like a social security number, it's assigned to a feature when it's created and it never changes. But I like to use the name of the feature instead. Let's change this to shaft underscore DIA. And then let's see, I also want the length of this whole D5. This is going to be equal to, let's have it just be equal to the value of the diameter. Diameter colon F I D underscore shaft DIA. Okay, that's good. Now I want to control the size of the chamfer. So let's write a comment line, control chamfer dimension. And I'll pick the chamfer right out of the model tree. And I can see there's the D6 dimension. This is going to be equal to, and to save myself some typing, let me grab this and copy it, control C and then control V. And let's see, I want this to be divided by six. Now also notice that I have a mistake here. I want this to be divided by three. So divided by three. Okay, and let's see. I also want to control the length of the spline cut. Let me find that feature in the model. So here we have the D8 dimension. And, and let me put in a comment line so that someone else can understand my design intent later on. Control, spline, cut, length. And this is going to be equal to, let me use control V to paste in that value. So we'll use the same diameter of the shaft as the length of the spline cut. So this is good. Let's hit the verify relations. And you'll notice that we get these warnings here. Hey, dimension of preceding feature is modified. That's okay, as long as we're not getting any spelling errors. Now I will click the OK button and then hit the check mark. And now we have the spline sizing feature. I'm going to drag that up in the model tree as well so that it is right after the calculation. That way, this feature will then run the relations that controls the sizing of these other features that will eventually be in my user-defined analysis. But let's test this out in this model. Let's select the sketch and I'm going to use the edit dimensions and let's see, where's that dimension? There's the initial diameter, it's a value of 24. Let's double click on this and change it to a value of 50 and everything updated proportionately. Let's try changing this once more. Double click on it. Let's change this to a value of 100. And again, you can see that the spline cuts are updating automatically based on that. Hey, let's try going in the other direction. Let's change this to a value of 12. And that way, we're getting everything to update the way that we want it to because of my relation datum analysis feature. In the next video, I will take these and put these into a user-defined feature so that I can place these in any other different models and it will update the size automatically. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.